Solomon for wisdom, Hercules for strength, Atlas for stamina, Zeus for power, Achilles for courage, Mercury for speed, Billy Batson, say the magic word. Writer and artist Jeff Smith's 2007 four-issue miniseries Shazam! The Monster Society of Evil is a tightly focused, uplifting tale of classic, good-hearted superheroics in the modern age. It's a story where the shining superhero Captain Marvel and the creeping evil of Mr. Mind collide in a world where the lines between good and evil have begun to blur. But Smith's comic book is not about the grey morality that could be present in his story, and that very much defines both comic books and the real world itself in the modern age. No, this is a story where the goodness in people shines brightly, and our heroic, better selves save the day. It's a story that courageously, sweetly tells us that everything will be alright in the end. Loosely retelling the story of Captain Marvel's first encounter with the villainous Mr. Mind and his monster society of evil from the 1940s, Smith's story sees young orphan Billy Batson granted powers from the ancient wizard Shazam and able to transform into his champion, Captain Marvel. For there is evil in the world, and wherever evil rears its ugly head, Captain Marvel will be there to fight it. But there's just one small complication. A mistake made by Billy opens up our world to invasion from the vile Mr. Mind and his society. Now, Billy must bear his newfound responsibilities while also learning that he has a long-lost sister, Mary. With Captain Marvel and Mr. Takitani, our new band of heroes must fight these forces of evil while a shadowy government conspiracy seeks to exploit the powers of both sides. Over the course of four issues, we track Billy's transformation into Captain Marvel. Yes, we're calling him Captain Marvel and not Shazam since that's what he's called here. His discovery of his sister Mary, who is also transformed into a hero. Their confrontation with the corrupt Dr. Savannah, who heads the newly formed Department of Technology and Heartland Security and their ultimate battle with the forces of Mr. Mind, who attempt to wipe out humanity. But throughout these escalating battles, Smith's story remains focused on the idea of finding your family, sometimes literally, sometimes not, and believing in one another, as well as yourself. In doing so, people discover their inner goodness and strength, which pushes them to be better and love one another more, even when the world leans darker and more cynical than we thought possible. Jeff Smith best known for being the creator of indie comics Bone and Razzle, has an art style that leans toward the cartoonish, rounded figures, exaggerated eyes, bold but somewhat static poses. It's perfect for a Shazam comic that remakes a classic story for the modern day. Dropping the controversial racial caricatures that have kept the original Monster Society of Evil story out of print for decades, and keeping a focus on modern concerns counterbalanced by tenderness and care for its characters. Smith even tips his hat to those early stories by including the Captain Marvel Club secret code in each issue, here presented as the Monster Society code. While this story of young Billy Batson becoming the mythic superhero Captain Marvel for the first time could take place in any decade, Smith firmly sets his take in a post-9-11 America, creating a stand-in for the Department of Homeland Security and having his characters express heightened anxieties in the aftermath of terrorism. It's not one of those smack you over the head with the realness types of modernizations, but it's enough realism to provide emotional heft and catharsis to what would otherwise be a brightly colored romp. And while the story never says that it takes place in New York, the city, with much of its major action taking place in what appears to be Central Park and multiple iconic buildings referenced in the background, is quite obviously the setting. In doing so, Smith creates a world that has less in common with the larger DC universe, with no other superheroes mentioned, and more in line with America in the mid-2000s. Smith, who first decided on the idea in 2003, also obliquely references the World Trade Center with his use of twin towering robots as the story's central danger. They loom over the landscape, and their battle with Captain Marvel at the climax briefly suggests the idea of greater calamity. But these are quiet references, and Smith's assertion of good triumphing over evil without lives lost in the cataclysm feels like the world's moral center realigning itself. As a character, Captain Marvel has proven difficult for many writers after the height of his popularity in the 1940s as a character published under Fawcett Comics. His powers and aesthetic are similar to Superman, even if his central character dynamics are not. Being bought by DC and put on the shelf for decades at a time doesn't help either. As a result, the character can often feel like a relic from a bygone era. 
But keeping that spirit of old-school heroics while blending them with a modern setting can make Captain Marvel feel completely unlike other heroes today. I was trying to figure out what it was about the characters in the 40s that made them appealing in the first place, explained Smith, and at the same time, take a character and make him readable to modern audiences. On the one hand, I went back to capture a simpler kind of fun. I'm a superhero. Bullets bounce off me. I can fly. I've got a magic word, Shazam, and I can go dash away now. But I tried to make the characters happen today, with today's sensibilities. At the start of the Monster Society of Evil, young orphan Billy Batson is living on the streets, eking out a living with few people he can count on, until he's suddenly recruited by the ancient wizard Shazam to become the vessel for his champion, Captain Marvel, a beacon of hope and goodness in times of trouble. Those troubles steadily grow in number as giant robots are summoned into Central Park by Mr. Mind each day. And on the third day, the Destroyer will arrive, and with it, the destruction of humanity. As Billy, Mary, and Captain Marvel try to find a way to stop this annihilation from happening, Dr. Savannah teams up with Mr. Mind to gain greater power and stop the Marvels before they can interfere with his nefarious plans. The tiny Billy and Mary look and feel vulnerable, even if they are brave beyond their years. But their safety rests on the shoulders of Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel represents a sort of direct translation of the self-empowerment fantasies that have made superhero tales popular for generations. However, that empowerment can take on two different forms depending on how the character's transformation is presented. If Billy's consciousness remains during transformation, Captain Marvel is a symbol of becoming an adult and empowered in all the ways you wished as a child. The thought of, when I grow up, is suddenly brought to life and is even better than a kid could hope for, which is the de facto modern day take. But when Captain Marvel and Billy are separate beings, the hero fulfills a child's fantasy of finding an adult who cares about him or her. For Billy Batson, an orphan looking for a place to belong and someone he can trust, Captain Marvel provides a positive example of an adult parental figure he can lean on. While everyone has their preferences, Smith's decision to keep them separate turns Marvel into a sort of caretaker for Billy. This plays into the book's larger theme of finding hope and building vulnerable, positive relationships despite the larger world becoming darker and more dangerous. It also puts the young boy into enough peril to keep the stakes high. Billy can't always turn into Marvel, and as the dangers mount, he'll need to be strong and courageous himself. Researching the original comics by C.C. Beck and Bill Parker made it clear that Billy and the Captain were two separate individuals that somehow shared the same space, said Smith. That not only tied into the weird quantum physics of the Rock of Eternity, but also gave me the idea that Captain Marvel was something like a genie in a bottle who could be called upon for help. That notion of jinn mythology helped me explain Talkie Tawny the Talking Tiger, because if I made him a jinn, he could shapeshift from man to beast. The Monster Society of Evil is a true all-ages comic book, in a very real sense of the term. There's something for everyone here, no matter the reader's age. Smith isn't trying to create a dark and edgy take on a classic Captain Marvel story. Instead, he's updating timeless superhero action with a modern-day surrounding to create an inspirational tale that shines brighter against shades of modern cynicism. It's a light cynicism, but the story's oblique references to U.S. government fear after the September 11th terrorist attacks keeps relatable human drama in focus. Despite the setting, Despite the threats, Smith approaches the story with a sweetness and positivity that informs how he treats Billy, Mary, Captain Marvel, and the rest, as well as the book's outlook on the world as a whole. In essence, Smith's story believes that people are worthy of love, and that choosing to embrace our goodness will bring us through the dark times. Smith's art, like his visuals on Bone and Razzle, leans toward a comic strip quality with influences from Karl Barks's Scrooge McDuck, Walt Kelly's Pogo, and early Mad Magazine. The miniseries layouts are very simple, often sticking to somewhere between four and six panels per page, and utilizing standard square and rectangle shapes with consistent spacing between them. The choice aligns with the creator's traditional cartoonist approach to pacing, and a comic strip aesthetic to storytelling. It may not be flashy, but it's a nice match to the classic heroics that take place within the borders. It also makes it much easier for younger readers to follow along, lowering the bar to entry and emphasizing the all-ages nature of the comic. The exaggerated visuals help soften the stakes and emphasize the heroics, while still being captivating in how they tell the story. The style also supplements Smith's outlook on humanity today. Yes, there is evil in the world, and yes, there are people who will exploit that evil for their own gain. But our capacity for good will overcome the darkness in the end if we believe in each other and take chances to do what's right.
Shazam! and the Monster Society of Evil is a very loose retelling that certainly reflects some of the anxieties occurring at the time of its publication in 2007, but they're present within allegories, not direct elements of the world. Darkness exists on the periphery, making Smith's good-natured positivity as a storyteller more evident. It also makes the dangers faced by Billy and Mary more threatening. That's not just the legions of bugs, robots, and alligator men, but the everyday perils as well. Billy is living on the streets and is threatened regularly. Mary runs away from her foster home, away from an unhappy house and toward a child's dream of joining the circus. When they find each other, they find something that they can cling to. Family. A rarity. That surrogate family is enlarged with the inclusion of Captain Marvel, the Wizard, and Taki, who take turns protecting and guiding Billy and Mary. When Mary is kidnapped by Savannah to be used as part of Mr. Mind's robot war machine, Billy must not only expose the doctor's wicked ways to the public with the help of the local news, but also save Mary without turning into Captain Marvel. It's a combination of Billy's kindness that is revisited upon him from the most unlikely of sources, and his self-empowerment that lead to the comic's most inspiring moment. With Billy changing into a massive version of Captain Marvel, and destroying the gigantic robots with one enormous punch. It's a definitive, joyous victory over evil, and one that puts the world back in its proper place. And a last second save by Mary asserts her power in the world too, and rights the more real-world-related wrongs caused by Dr. Savannah. These victories feel like the end of a classic superhero tale, paying off the many small threads created by Smith in service to a story that honors the roots of what makes Captain Marvel, Mary Marvel, and their world captivating even today. But the greatest extension of love given by Smith is shown to his two young, pure-hearted characters at the very end. Because it's not just the world that's been saved, but Billy and Mary too. With Billy offered a reporting position at WHIZ and the once distant idea of a family now a beautiful reality for the two orphan siblings, it's almost impossible for Billy to believe. But this time, it's Mary who affirms the goodness in the world, convincing both Billy and the reader of a brighter future to believe in. What's wrong? I've never been part of any family before. That sure is a beautiful sunset. You know what, Billy? I think we'll be all right. Yeah, you're right. 